G'day. What I'm about to show you is something a little different. It's a kind of engineering approach to drawing the derivative of a function or a graph of a function. Uh, traditionally, when we're taught this in school, we're simply invited to get the concept. I'll show you what I mean. If you're given some particular function, like this for example, f of x, and you're asked to graph its derivative, the traditional expectation is this. We examine this graph to find where its gradient is zero. There are reference points because the derivative is the gradient function. And without any scale, we can't plot we can't measure, and certainly don't have a scale here, we don't know what is a gradient of 5 or what's a gradient of negative 3, but we do know a gradient of 0, and we can plot 0 on this. So if I find that there's a gradient of 0 at this point, and another one here, and another one here, and another one here, those become our key reference points for drawing the gradient function. I'll draw a dotted line down to line up the x values. So on this graph, the function has a zero, or has a horizontal tangent, that is the gradient is zero at that x value. So the gradient function is zero. Again here, the gradient function is zero, the gradient function is zero, and the gradient function is zero. Once we have established that, we're simply invited to inspect the graph and note, for example, we could start anywhere we like, and note that the gradient from here to here is, is positive. It starts off very gently positive, steepens up and then it levels off again, but nonetheless it's positive the whole time. And that means that if I'm graphing the, the gradient function, I need positive values from here to here, hence my graph will go up and down. It must be continuous, because this graph is continuous and everywhere differentiable, and I don't know how high or how low it goes, or whether it's slightly lopsided, slightly skew or not, but I do know it must go up into the positive region. Here, the gradients are negative. They're going downhill, so all my gradients between these two points will be below zero, all negative numbers, negative gradients. All the gradients here are positive. Even though the graph's below the origin, you can see that the tangent is positive. Positive slope. Consequently, in this region, in this domain, all the gradients will, this is the gradient function, all the gradients will be above zero. And we work our way back. These are negative gradients, negative results, positive gradients, positive results, and this is our gradient function. These points we know for sure. There's no doubt these are horizontal tangents. No doubt they're zero gradients. But we don't know how far down this goes or how far up or how far down or what the shape is. There is a method for drawing it more accurately if you're interested. And it involves, let's just call it an engineering technique. I saw it in, in a, a, a mathematics magazine decades, many years ago, and it stuck with me as being a very elegant solution to the problem. So let me clear the board and I'll show you how to do it. Right, what I've done is I've drawn my function graph and prepared my derivative axes at least. I should show the origin. But we have no numbers on either of the, the axes, no scale. But this is the curve we've been given. Now I just randomly chose this, uh, quite literally. If there is a scale here, if you imagine one, imagine going back just one unit. So this is at negative 1. 
Now, if there is no such thing, just choose a point. And I want to point this out to you. First of all, let's locate the zeros. So we know the graph goes through here. We know it goes through here. And we know it goes through here. Because the gradient here is 0, 0 and 0. And since this is the gradient function, we need zeros. How do we get the shape in between? Well, here's what was pointed out. If I drew, I'll use blue here, if I drew a tangent here, for example, its gradient is rise over run, is it not? And we would allocate a fraction or a decimal, some representation of that. Uh, this, for example, could be 2 over 3, and we'd write that as 2 thirds or 0.6 repeater or something. We generally prefer fractions. But, what, whatever it is, whether we write the gradient as 2 thirds or 0.6 repeater, either of those could be written over 1, 2 thirds over 1, or 0 0.6 repeater over 1. And that's why we choose this one unit here. Because if I draw a line parallel to this, here, so that is parallel to that, then this height over 1 is the gradient of this. And in fact that height is the gradient. As you can see, if it's over 1, then the rise down here, this rise would be two thirds of 0.6 repeater. And if I move that, if, if this was the point of contact there, and I move this down, there's the point. At that x value, that's the gradient. What about here? Well, here you can see the tangent is much deeper. And if I draw a line, parallel to that, through here, then this, this length, over 1, will be the gradient of this tangent. And again, if I mark this x value here and move across, there's where the coordinates are. So that represents the gradient, gradient over 1, the gradient of that tangent at this point. And again, if I do the same down here, it's very marginally steeper at that point. This is much needed doing it on, on paper, of course. Uh, I then draw a slightly steeper line and that gradient to here. And this now becomes a graph, a much more accurate representation of the graph of what's happening to the gradients there. You can see their positive gradients. And these are, in fact, above the, the uh, x-axis. Uh, in between, if I chose this point with this negative gradient, just try as best I can to draw that. I've got a shaped tip on this, and it's, there we go, that's better. So at this point, I draw a line parallel to that through this negative one. So there we go, draw it. And that length is the gradient of that line. So if I draw this out to where this meets, there we go. This one here. And you can see that you can just take representative points all the way along. And I now have to draw a line parallel to that. And this would meet this line. I've got one back here a bit more shallow. And the shallow one, draw that in, and it would meet across here. So this, this actually would come down very steeply. I'm having a bit of trouble joining them here. But I think you can see that by choosing just a few points, three or four points in each section, um, 
If I wanted to know the gradient here, for example, I'd be drawing a line like that. So I'd be drawing a parallel line down here. Actually, it's about the same as the one I just had. So at this point, this would be the gradient. And I can therefore draw quite a few lines, get some coordinates, and presumably join up the dots. Just needs to go back one so we've got the gradient over one. It's a lovely little concept. Now, if you haven't understood it, then perhaps you can play the video over again or show it to someone else and discuss it. If you have, and you're a teacher, you may wish to incorporate this in class because it may help students understand the connection between rise over run of a tangent and copying the same slope down here, the parallel line, and having rise over one and being able to plot the exact gradient. So that this is in fact showing the gradient curve of that. A lovely little concept. If you've enjoyed it, please leave a comment and certainly click on the like button. And if you'd like to see more or find out more, then please subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. And as always, I thank you very much for watching.